hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. This time it's a product review. We're going to review the Zigu G106, a new transceiver from the Chinese manufacturer. Now, you may be aware that there is a review on YouTube which, to put it mildly, is pretty derogatory. Was it a genuine review or was it a hoax review? Well, there can be three reasons. First of all, the radio genuinely was faulty. Secondly, the reviewer didn't quite understand what he was reviewing. Or, perhaps, for whatever reason, it was a hoax review. Now, it's unlikely that the manufacturers would send a faulty transceiver out to be reviewed. That is very unlikely. And in the review, at no time did I see the radio actually in operation. Just saw a couple of displays of what appeared to be very dirty signals on both SSB and CW. But there was no actual operation. And I would suggest that that review was scripted. Anyway, perhaps the radio was faulty, or perhaps it wasn't. The second possibility is that the guy didn't really test it properly, didn't really know what he was doing. I mean, I could very easily make a dirty display of any radio by simply overloading the display. So, did that happen, or was it a hoax? Thirdly, perhaps it was deliberate. It was a deliberate attempt to rubbish the radio. And not only rubbish the radio, but rubbish the whole range of radios. And I keep coming back to the fact that it appeared to be a scripted review. So, was it genuine? Or was it a hoax? Well, I'm going to tell you what I found about this radio. The Zigu G106. So let's take a look at it. It's a nicely built, rounded, cased radio. It feels very nice to the touch. It feels quite solid, so let's put it on the scales and see how much it weighs. Alright, so it's 718 grams. Now as regards dimensions, it's 135 by uh, 120 and uh, 40 millimeters high. Underneath are four rubber feet and that makes it very firm on the operating desk. Now let's have a look at the front panel. I like those silver controls. They sit nicely against the black background. Uh, on the right hand side you've got this large tuning knob with the thumb uh, point there for spinning it around. Uh, volume control there on the left. And oh, you've got four menu uh, buttons underneath and the menu items are displayed on the screen. Uh, on the left there you've got the headphone socket, mic socket, and there you've got the transmit lamp. Now let's have a look at the top panel, because like a lot of Zigu radios, some of the central controls are on the top panel here. On the far left you've got the on-off button, and once the unit's on, if you tap that button you can switch the backlight display on or off. The next button along is the mode button and when you press that it cycles through the modes. The modes are SSB, CW and AM. And on the far right you've got a pair of buttons that enable you to cycle through the bands. Um, you either go up or down depending on which button you press. Those buttons also enable you to change the tuning speed or the tuning steps by holding the buttons down a bit longer it will change the tuning steps and uh, left is higher, right is uh, smaller tuning steps. The tuning steps by the way go from 1 MHz right down to 1 Hz. On the back you've got the BNC antenna socket then you've got the earth terminal there, you've got the 3.5mm key socket, a comms port, an accessory socket and then the 138 DC socket and a power cable is included. Navigating the menu system is extremely easy. If I press in the tune button, 
it brings up the menu on the screen and you can see the various menu items as I cycle through them and the menu items are selected by these buttons underneath. Now let's have a look at the display. On the far left you've got the R symbol which is receive, uh, then you've got the mode which in this case is CW at the moment, then you've got the preamp which is uh, switched on with a button on the top uh, panel of the radio, and then on the far right you've got QSK which means to say break in for CW has been switched on. Then below that you've got the main frequency display, below that you've got the frequency of the A or B VFO, you can't see the SMH at the moment because we've got no signal, and at the bottom you've got the spectrum scope. Let me demonstrate one of the uh, interesting menu items. We can press a menu item and we can make the spectrum display larger. We sacrifice the S meter, but we've now got a larger spectrum display. I found one hidden control in the QSK menu. If you turn that on, I found that the braking was very rapid indeed. The relay was going backwards and forwards very fast. But I found that if you hold that button in for about three or four seconds, it then takes you into a menu where you can actually extend the duration to several, uh, several milliseconds or up to uh, one or two seconds. And uh, that solved the problem. So let's now have a quick run through the menu items. VFO memory, VFO AB, memory write, and memory recall. CW filter, CW side tone, CW dot dash ratio, and QSK break in. Key speed, manual or electronic, iambic setting, and startup screen. Split mode, spectrum display size, beep tone and firmware version. And finally, you can select the FM broadcast mode or the band switch mode, which either switches through the handbands or through the complete shortwave spectrum covering the range 500 kilohertz to 30 megahertz because it's got a general coverage receiver built in. The radio comes with a simple PTT speaker microphone and that connects via a modular plug to the socket on the G106 and in order to switch on the speaker microphone and switch off the speaker you simply press briefly the volume control once and press it again to go back to the speaker. Now the hoax video that I referred to at the beginning of this uh, video showed very dirty outputs on both SSB and CW but here you see the shots from our own lab and these are close in um, displays of the signals perfectly clean and this was confirmed on a wider spectrum display as well. I set the G106 up in my motorhome because I wanted to check how well it would cope with VSWR. There is no internal antenna tuner so I decided to compare it with the IC705 and I used a mobile whip where I knew at the band edges there was fairly high SWR. I just wanted to see how the two transceivers compared. Neither of those have got antenna tuners, so this is the result of my test. I set the IC705 to the centre of the band where the VSWR is pretty low and uh, send out a CW carrier. And you can see that there's about, well it's actually less than 10 watts, there's about 8 or 9 watts coming out. Next I set the IC705 right to the top of the band where there's quite a high SWR and as you can see there's only about a couple of watts coming out as expected. Next I used the same setup with the G106 starting at the centre of the band with a low VSWR and I think I've got even more power than the 705 uh, on that particular test. Then I set the G106 to the top of the band with the high SWR and believe it or not you can see just how much more power I was getting out even when I was at the top of the band. So the G106 seems to handle a high, uh, or higher VSWR far better than the IC705 which means to say that maybe the fact that it hasn't got an internal ATU is not so much of a problem. And next, an on-air contact. One, two, three, Oscar, Juliet, Victor, QRP, G3, Ocean, Juliet, Victor, QRP, QSL? Yeah, I got a that time, Peter, congratulations, G3, OJV, GI, 0, LVI, uh, flying signal for QRP, Peter, you're 20 over 9 at the moment, so 
Okay, Damon, just before you go, can you give us a, a report on the audio? Is the audio okay, Break? Yeah, I see I did the audio, CDP style audio, no problems at all, okay? Okay, you take care. Good evening to you. Thanks for the QSO from Golf 3. So, no problem there with the quality of the SSB transmitted signal. Let's now have a brief comparison with the G106 compared with my IC7300. IC7300 G106 IC7300 G106 This is IC7300 G106 IC7300 G106 So, no problem on the receive side. Finally, I thought I'd check the power on the through line, and this is on 20 meters. <clears throat> it hits 10 watts, and in fact, it hits, hits 10 watts on 80, 40, and 20. So, quite surprising, really. Then I found on 21 megas, 50 meters, it hit even more power. It's registering around about 12 watts on uh, 15 meters. Quite impressive. And then on 10 meters, I think it's slightly better. Um, this is on 10 meters. Quite amazing, really. So, for a rig that's rated nominally at 5 watts, uh, it's certainly more than 5 watts, and I would classify it as a 10 watt radio. So there we are, that's the Zigu G106. What do I think of it? Well, <laughs> you've seen the video, and uh, it seems to perform pretty well. I mean, they rate it as a 5 watt or greater than a 5 watt transceiver. I would say you can almost regard it as 10 watts. So it's probably as good as a 10 watt rig, which is a plus point. It also seems to handle VSWR quite well. Now, it hasn't got an internal ATU, but if you're only worried about a 2 or 3 to 1 VSWR, it seems to put out the power. Because remember, an antenna tuner doesn't get rid of VSWR, it just gives you a better match. But this transceiver seems to be able to feed into a reasonable, well, not high, but a sort of typical VSWR you might get when you're mobile, 2.5 two to 1, 3 to 1. It seems to still deliver full power which is good news. There's no RIT control, but how often do you use RIT? There's no RF gain control, but there is a preamp you can switch on and off, and uh, that really acts as an attenuator. How often do you adjust your RF gain control? There seems to be a bit of uh, speech compression built into it. Uh, I can't tell, but judging by the, the uh, power meter when I'm talking into the microphone, I suspect there's a bit of compression there. Um, and... Uh, it is basically a basic transceiver, regarded as a basic 10 watt transceiver, or almost 10 watts. And uh, it gives you sideband and it gives you AM. There's no, uh, there's no FM, of course, uh, but there is broadcast. The broadcast FM actually works quite well. <laughs> you put a short uh, antenna into the socket and you get the local broadcast stations. So uh, there's a bit of a sort of add on there, if you like. But altogether, it's, it's, it feels nice, it operates nice, I could live with it. I've had a few QSOs with it on CW and sideband. And I've tried to sort of, I've tried to find out if there's anything really wrong with it. But there isn't anything really wrong with it. If you were to criticise it, you'd criticise it for the things that are missing. But the, the things that are missing are not overly important. And this radio has obviously been built as a basic transceiver without the frills, and I think it meets the uh, objective there. It's a nice little rig. Now, as for that uh, uh, other video that uh, was, was actually, I think, I think everybody's begun, begun to think it's a bit of a joke, really. Um, if I had a radio that had these faults, distorted or wide audio and uh, dirty CW, I think the first thing I'd do is to find out whether I got a 41. I wouldn't carry on doing a test, scripting it, and running it down together with all the other products from that company. So I'll let you decide whether that video is a hoax. 
But I hope, at the same time, that this video has given you the truth about the Zigu G106. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support on this channel. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, take care. Enjoy your home radio.